Hi there everyone, it's Bren here and welcome back to my gardening channel. Well, this week I've been pulling plants out left, right and centre. You should see my compost pile, it's absolutely massive. I'm just trying to make room for all those autumn winter crops that are really need to get in. You know what it's like at this time of year, you've got a really short window time frame before winter arrives. So in this week's video I'll show you around, show you a few areas that I've cleared up and I will also be doing a garden harvest which will include the cutest little squash. They're called gem squash. So why don't you sit back and relax for a few minutes and I'll show you around. It's a real overcast day today. Hopefully we'll get some rain. We'll see how that goes. I hope we do. Um, it was meant to rain yesterday, but oh, we hardly got anything. And the ground could do a really good soaking, I think, now at this stage. But um, look at this. Look at my mulberry tree over here. And the leaves are starting to change colour. You can definitely tell that autumn is on the way. Um, I put this mulberry tree in about, oh, it was a teeny tiny. It was probably only up to this size here, maybe um, three years ago. And I've only had a handful of mulberry so far, but I'm looking forward to maybe next year getting a good harvest. But as you can see, I've taken out a lot of the vines out of this area. I've left the cosmos, which is over there. Here it is. Um, it's going to flower soon, hopefully. And I've got a lot of brassicas planted in little um, pots that I'm going to put in here. And I'll put some nice um, annual flowers as well. I still have to clear this section over here. Um, but there are a few more pumpkins. There's the um, Mother Hubbard, the Baby Blue. So I'm going to leave them for the moment. But I'm excited about planting this area up. Okay, so we're going to start over here today and um, got some good news. Thank you to some people who um, have commented on my last YouTube video. I now have the name for this plant or this um, melon here. It's called, um, I'll put the name on the screen because I'm not very good at um, pronouncing this. Um, it's Spanish, so it's a Spanish melon and it's called Pel de Sapo, which in Spanish means frog green which you can kind of understand because it's kind of um got a kind of like frog skin appearance doesn't it and it's quite firm and it's got ridges as well um it does have other names called santa claus melon christmas melon um and actually um i when i was reading up about it in australia and um, some of the growers have actually given it a nickname called a croc melon which you can kind of see it probably does look a bit like a, a crocodile skin as well first goodie in the basket today and later on what I will be doing with this is I'll actually um, cut this open and give it a, um, a taste test and let you know what it what it's like. So I don't know if you remember but last week's video I showed you these. These are the gem squash and I was thinking oh they've change in colour maybe because of sunburnt or something or maybe that's what they're meant to do and actually on my Instagram account a lovely lady called Jill um, she um, grows these where she's from and she said that um, they need to be harvested before they change to this orange colour or they go over ripe and stringy so um, oh, I've got quite a few that have um, changed colour but um, there are some that are still just completely green so I'm going to harvest all of these now and I'll cut one open as well later on to have a look inside. So what I loved about these was the idea that they are like single kind of portion squash or um, pumpkins. They can just cut in half, put a filling in it and then just um, like roast them in the oven, which, you know, I'm all for um, easy cooking, to be honest. Just spotted one over here. It's um, made its way up this tree. Do you see it there? Oh, I hope there's no spiders. Let's see if I can yank it off. There we go. Oh, cool. That one's actually just all green. So I'll be able to do a bit of comparison between the full green one and the um, the one that has a bit of um, orange. So I got um, 10 in total off the one vine, which is pretty cool. I mean, there's five in my family, so we have two each, I guess. Okay, so next I'm going to pick some more of these little um, tomatoes that I have here. I'm going to forage for them. See, there's plenty there. These have all self-seeded, so I'm going to pick a big bowl of them. 
love about these, even though they're really small, you can just like pick off the whole truss like this. It just makes it a bit easier. Got quite a few there and I still have some more left um, just around on the ground. I reckon they'll keep me going for a few more weeks, the rest that are left on the um, plants. Um, but for the moment, these make a lovely snack and I'm going to bring them inside. My kids really like these ones. And here's another crimson sweet watermelon. I'll open this up later as well and we'll have a taste of it. Now over where the raised beds are, um, as you can see I've um, made some um, teepees here and there's going to be some back there and I'm going to um, put my trestle in this section here for the entry and there's another exit entry over there I'm going to make another one for there too but um, look at this it's so exciting um, some of my um, seeds have germinated these are uh, radish here yes I know I planted them way too close together um, I have to get better at that I do and over here I can see um, some carrots popping up here I think these are the atomic red carrots um, but I do have this plant here. I've been waiting a long time for it to flower. Um, it does look a little bit damaged, but look over here. This is um, the pineapple sage. So both the leaves and the flowers are edible. And I'm telling you, they actually really smell and have a flavor of um, pineapple. And this is a wonderful plant to have um, in autumn time because, oh, excuse that mess behind there, <laughs> um, in autumn time because it's one of those light flowering plants um, and it's really, really pretty with vibrant red color. Here's another beautiful um, late summer autumn flowering plant. This is called Autumn Joy Sedum and it's wonderful for this area. It's drought tolerant and low maintenance. And best of all, it's so easy to propagate. So all you have to do is you can either do a leaf cutting or you can do a stem cutting pretty much any time when it's in growth. Um, I wouldn't really be doing it now because it's got the flare heads on it, but um, I would probably do it a bit earlier when you see the um, new shoots coming up. Um, so it's a perennial plant and oh, it just has these beautiful colored flowers i think and they're all like individual flowers and it really attracts pollinators like um, bees and butterflies they absolutely love it so the next thing i'm going to harvest will be these these are golden zucchinis really gorgeous there's quite a few there this one here i'll harvest off i did bring a knife but i might just see if i could twist it off oh without breaking anything yep there we go isn't that lovely look at the stripes the pattern on that one and um, I'm gonna be saving seeds from this one for next year these um, zucchinis here I planted them a bit later in the season so I did a bit of succession sowing is where you try and extend the growing season by planting some crops at various stages I'm gonna take this other one off and um, I did have other um, zucchinis growing but um, I wanted to show you one that I let um, grow to a larger size so it could save the seeds oh don't let me wreck this plant oh there we go got it okay I'll put this one in here and then I will show you um the other zucchini what I do is when I'm saving seeds is I let the one of the um the zucchinis grow really really big so it gets like an um an outer the outer part of it gets really hard and um, so if this was just regular size it would probably be only about that size um, and the reason why I do this is to help the seeds inside develop then what I will do is I'll cut it open and I'll scoop out the seeds and lay them out on paper towel and let them dry and then they're ready for next year I'll put them in a brown paper bag label them and I'll get them out next year the next thing I'm going to harvest are these West Indian ger gherkins. They're indigenous to Africa. Um, I've had them on my video before where I've spoken about them um, on one of my other harvest videos. But um, for today, I'm going to pick these off. I might cut one open now too, just to show you what it looks like inside. But there's quite a few on the fine. I'll pick a fair few off today. Careful of these guys because they are a bit prickly. Um, but as I said before, Oh, like this one's really pretty I can feel you just give them a rub like this and then it makes it much smoother and um, it won't hurt you when you bite into it this one cut in half just so you can have a look and see what it looks like on the inside
There you go, there's the harvest for today. Um, I'm pretty happy with what I've picked. Um, I love the crimson sweet um, watermelon, which is here, and the pal de sapo there. I'm going to cut both of them open now. Then I'm going to take a photo, and then I'm going to taste both of them and give you a bit of a review on them. Um, but you know what? It's actually raining now. It's so exciting. I hope it rains all day. Um, it will really make such a big difference. I actually cleared out this area over here this week and I'm going to sprinkle some um, poppy seeds in there. I'll probably put something to cover it to stop the birds getting at it. But um, yeah, it's exciting. It's changing. Everything's changing now. You can feel autumn in the air. Oh, and I never showed you this. These are some daylilies over here. Um, beautiful orange colored flower. I forgot to show you that today. So I've just laid everything out and taken a few photos and um, so it's time to start tasting. So let's start off with, why don't I do the little gem first? Um, I'm not going to be tasting them but I did say I would cut two of them open. So the larger ones here, they were just completely uh, green and that was the stage they were meant to harvest at. And you can see it's got a nice solid look to the inside there. Um, I guess I'm not really going to be able to do a proper review until I actually taste them. But this is the um, one, this half, see it's starting to turn a bit orange and you can kind of see it has gone a bit stringy looking um, and this section here I just had a little pull back of it and it does look quite yeah, stringy so that will be interesting to see what that tastes like I think. Are the crimson sweet um, watermelons? I'll cut a piece of this off now, but I wanted to just say what I did notice and what I have noticed when I've been opening these is the aroma is just so intense, beautiful, rich watermelon taste. Just cut a slice off there, and you can already see look how juicy it is. Okay, I'll have a bite of this one now. So that one tasted like the other ones I've harvested, it was lovely and sweet and juicy, extremely refreshing. And I'm going to try this here now, the Pel de Sapo. The first thing you notice here is it's got a kind of pale, almost white coloured flesh. And I had a little bite of this one. And it's quite a mild melon, I would say. It has a similar flavour to, I would say, probably like a honeydew melon. Um, it's quite, quite nice. I enjoy that it's not too overpowering in flavour. And again, it's lovely to have this on a nice warm day. It's really refreshing. Thank you so much for watching this week's video. I hope you enjoyed watching me harvest these goodies and showing you a bit around the garden and what's in flower at the moment. Um, if you're interested in seeing more videos, I will be posting on a weekly basis. So I'd love if you subscribe to the channel. And thank you for the, to those who have commented on previous videos. If you have any questions about this one, please put the comment below and I'm more than happy to answer them. Um, but until next time, I'll say bye for now and happy gardening.